What is going on, Governors? Just cool here, and today we're watching Solomar have over two hundred thousand dollars worth of troops get killed, gone, forever, destroyed in a mobile game. That's right. This player, Solomar, is the literal strongest player by power in the mobile game Rise of Kingdoms. Rise of Kingdoms is a mobile war strategy, city building, commander building game where you, with your alliance of 150 plus people, battle it out against other alliances in this game mode called The Lost Kingdom. Uh, we were in the Lost Kingdom, and after our alliance was defeated, uh, we all went back to our safe zone, our home kingdom. But this player, Solimar, I mean, when you have the kind of money that he does to drop on a mobile game, you don't have time to play as much as you have time to spend, apparently. And he didn't think that his city, I suppose, could get attacked in this way uh, and get completely zeroed out. This, by the way is an effort put forth by north of 100 players, probably closer to 200 players, simultaneously acting in concert, launching these rallies. Each of these pictures of a commander that you see with a little shield uh, next to the name is a rally attack. A rally attack has uh, north of 10 or 15 players all involved trying to attack this city, and they can bring more armies into the rally. Uh, new players can join into each of those rallies. What's so insane about this attack is that it has to be a different alliance launching each of these rallies. So we're talking about nine plus alliances, each with 150 plus players, all coordinating to pull off this attack. Now, the way that combat works in Rise of Kingdoms, if you're defending your city, which is what Solimar is doing here, this 400 million power player, the strongest player in the game, or, well, <laughs> he was anyways, as he's getting zeroed here, um, gosh, the way city defense works is that you've got something called a hospital. The hospital has capacity for some number of troops. A player of Solimar's power has room for 690,000 troops. The thing is, he's got 35 million, 35 million troops in his city at the start of all this craziness. So the way this works out is that his hospital fills up after the first attack, and then everything that goes beyond the hospital's capacity just dies. They just die. So that, that is investment that's gone forever. Now, if Solomar was online, if he was actively playing, he could just heal his troops. This would not be a problem. He'd spend his resources, heal his troops, and, and this would not be as much of an issue. A part of why this is so insane, though, is that I guess when you have this many troops— um, <laughs> when you have 35 million troops and you're getting rallied this many times, your hospital will fill up in the first few seconds of combat. So some number of his troops were going to die every single time. But between each of these rallies that you're watching happen, he could have had 690,000 of those troops healed back up, which represents, I don't know, um, north of $1,000. North of $1,000 for just healing up between each of these rounds of attacks that's going on, which is kind of insane. Now, we reached out to Solimar, and we were like, dude, you're getting rallied. You need to come online and do something about this. Um, and he was unreachable. I would imagine that Solimar was on his own private jet flying from uh, his home to his private island <laughs> where he and uh, his family of honey badgers, they just don't care. They just don't care. The reason the graphics, by the way, look so basic right now is that we have what's called simplified graphics on. There are so many things happening on the screen that even with our iPhone Pro, um, which like just came out, we just got the newest, sweetest iPhone, like it can't handle the amount of folks that are on the screen right now, right? Like each of these rally attacks has 15 plus players and you know, there's reinforcements going into those rallies. They probably end up being 20 to 25 players per rally. So it could be a solid 200 players represented on the screen right now. Oh my gosh. 
so insane. We're looking through a report, by the way, now to show what happened in one of these attacks. One of our allies happened to sneak into um, the city in order to uh, be a part of the combat, and because of that, they get this report. Um, in each of these, you're seeing on the left the number of troops that uh, Solomar had die, and on the right, the number of troops that a rally that attacked the city had die. And the reason that so many rallies were involved all at once is that the first rally that hits tanks everything that's happening and the rest of the rallies they only receive counterattack damage all of the primary damage being dealt was to the first rally that hit and that was the the rally that lost like 1.5 million troops meanwhile each of these other rallies is getting two for one three for one four for one trades which is pretty good value in the grand scheme of things now you may wonder now wait a minute chiskool if a player could spend over two hundred thousand dollars like why is it so easy to take them out and not only is this a feat of strength to have so many players, so many players have coordinated to do this attack, which, by the way, I like that Misfit Lion King was calling this a, a victory for the free-to-play player. <laughs> because, like, there were free-to-play players in this game participating in this attack, taking down the biggest spender in the game, right? Which is pretty nuts. But a part of the reason that these attacks did not go as well for Solimar as they should have, is that he's actually using the wrong commanders to defend his city. Commanders have four skills. Um, I guess technically five. The fifth unlocks when you've maxed out all the skills that a commander has. And uh, those skills are very important and are relevant to different aspects of the game. So commanders let you specialize an army for doing a certain thing in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, uh, when you're defending your city, you want to have what's called a garrison commander, a commander that's designed to defend stuff. Uh, Solomar, however, is using two conquering commanders. These are commanders that are designed to attack other players' cities. They're not built for city defense. And so although they are legendary commanders, which is the highest tier of commander that you could have in Rise of Kingdoms, at least at the time of this recording, um, they're the wrong commanders for the job. And not by a little, but by a lot. By a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> so bad. So only two of the four skills on these commanders are actually relevant for city defense. Um, half of the skills that these commanders have do nothing for defending your city, which is really bad. The other thing that could be happening here, impacting the effectiveness of this city defense, is that, gosh, the talents that he's chosen on these commanders might be all wrong. Now, every commander, as you level them up, gets more and more talents that they get to use to specialize their commander's effectiveness in different aspects of the battle. There are actually three talent trees that are available to each commander that you could go and use. So I am afraid that Solimar, with this conquering commander being one of the most uh, offensive, attacking, high-powered players in the game might actually have been using the conquering talent tree instead of better talents, which means, oh gosh, you've got half the relevant talents you would have normally had. You've got half of the, the relevant number of skills that you could have had. That is a part of what has led to this situation where, again, we're watching probably in the realm of $200,000 worth of troops get deleted. Now, again, a lot has to go wrong to end up in this situation that we find ourselves in here. Um, we uh, are participating in this thing called the Lost Kingdom, which is what you see at the top of the screen here. Uh, we lost our Lost Kingdom, where uh, eight different continents, okay, full continents of players, we're talking about a dozen plus alliances in each continent, are all battling each other in the Lost Kingdom. This is something that happens uh, every three months or so. There's a Lost Kingdom cycle. And um, after we lost, everybody teleported back to our home kingdom to be safe. But Solomar stayed behind. Solomar stayed behind, and the reason he stayed behind, well, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I couldn't tell you why Solomar decided to stay behind in the Lost Kingdom, which was a danger zone, it's entirely possible that he thought, you know what, 
This could never happen to me. This could never happen to me. I could never get zeroed. Who would who would dare to attack me? And if you were to attack Solimar City with one of your own marches, okay, one of your own marches, uh, even if you used a maxed army expansion, you could have, and even if you had like commanders that let you bring more troops, right? Even if you brought 350,000 troops, if you attack in a Solimar's 35 million troops, your whole army is going to die in a heartbeat. And um, yeah, I mean, that represents hundreds of dollars worth of in-game investment or a huge amount of time to have trained all of those troops free to play. Pretty nuts, right? Pretty nuts. Now, there's a bunch of different things happening in this video. Um, we can go a little bit deeper into some of the Rise of Kingdoms specifics here, which is that you've got an, a rally that is designed to tank and take the brunt of the damage from the city. That tank rally, in this case, is Richard I and Charles Martel, two legendary commanders that are extremely, uh, extremely defensive in nature. That allows all of the other armies to be hitting with relative immunity. I say relative because uh, they still take counterattack damage. So the way this works is that Solomar City is doing normal attack damage to the first rally that hits and skill attack damage to the first rally that hits the city. The rest of the armies receive what's called counterattack damage, and also the rally that is uh, the first one to hit is also receiving counterattack damage. Basically, every time you attack someone, you take some amount of damage back. That represents the troops defending themselves, because of course they would, right? <laughs> the other thing that's happening here is that for every army that's hitting this city, um, not only are all of these different debuffs being applied. Uh, there are commanders at play here that reduce the attack, that uh, reduce the healing effectiveness of the army that's being hit. Um, but in addition to that, for every rally and army that's hitting the city, there's what's called a surrounded bonus. Um, the city takes an additional 2% damage for each army beyond the first that is hitting it, which is pretty savage. Here, Solomar has already lost, uh, gosh, north of 120 million power, which is more power than I have, and I've spent over $10,000 in Rise of Kingdoms, which is pretty nuts. <laughs> it's pretty nuts, quite frankly, right? So now Solomar is getting hit again and again and again. Did I mention, by the way, the reason the graphics look the way they do is because we have Simplify graphics on. There's so many marches here that it's debatable whether or not our iPhone 11 Pro new phone can even handle what is happening here. It probably could have, honestly. It probably could have. I'm pretty sure it advises that you turn down the graphic settings when there's a ton of marches on the screen, right? And we're looking at probably 100 plus marches and players on the screen at the time. Uh, P.S. A march is um, one army of troops. Uh, each city, when it reaches the max city hall level, which is 25, can have five marches on the field at a time. So you can imagine that there's a lot of players in this teeny tiny area all at the same time. All at the same time. Whew. Totally insane. Now, if we want to geek out a little bit for our Rise of Kingdoms regulars who are on this channel... Let's talk a little bit about the commanders you would have optimally wanted to use for defending your city. Um, you would have wanted to use a commander like Charles Martel, Richard I. Oh, P.S. We took Simplify Graphics off for a second here just to show what that would look like. Totally nuts, right? Totally, totally nuts. We put it back on. We really want to make sure we got the footage. You want to use commanders like Charles Martel, Yi Song Ye, uh, Constantine or um, Richard I. Like, these are all great commanders for defending your city. These are all great commanders for defending your city. They're legendary. They've got four skills that are relevant for defending your city, uh, and they can do some serious work. Optimal primary commanders would be Charles Martel, most likely, or uh, Constantine, and that is because they've got the skill tree, not skill tree, support tree available to you. And that support tree is going to make it so you are cranking out those skills. In this exact situation, Solomar has all these commanders' expertise. He really should have been using uh, Constantine primary with Isongye secondary. Isongye circle AOE when expertise would have been hitting five different 
uh, rallies at a time and would have just been massive damage. It's 1,700 damage factor. And although for each army you hit, you deal 15% uh, less damage to each army. It still is just an insane amount of damage that he would have been dealing. And it would have been honestly prohibitive to attack this city at all. It would have been very, very terrifying to attack Solomar City. Still zeroable, but totally insane. Totally insane. Um, you would have wanted to have some number of talent points in the garrison tree, the remainder in the defense tree or support tree, um, and uh, any spillover you've got in the infantry tree there's a small amount there that you definitely would want to pick up um, that would have been the way to set up your talents p.s i'll have a card up in the top for a video where i talk all about optimal garrison commanders and builds that's what you would have wanted to have done now if you're attacking the city you want to be using commander pairings like khan with saladin Khan is just a rage monster. Uh, rage is the mechanic that determines when you get to use your highest damage skill. It's called the active skill. That active skill typically fires off every 10 seconds or so. Uh, but a commander like Genghis Khan reduces the rage requirement and increases the rage generation that you have so that those skills fire off crazy fast. It's like machine gun style. It's one of my favorite commanders in the game, honestly, second only to Yi Song Ye. So I would use Khan primary with Saladin secondary, bring full cavalry to that party. Uh, cavalry are a fine choice for a rally. Uh, not good, not bad. Uh, but the reason I recommend cavalry is that you've got two commanders that really kind of necessitate that you bring those. Um, other commander choices that you're seeing here include full infantry marches uh, with Richard and Charles, uh, Alexander the Great, and Richard or Charles Martel, uh, really great choices for hitting a city uh, that's this powerful. Um, and the way that these different troop types work in Rise of Kingdoms, by the way, is that uh, each of them counters and is countered by another troop type, right? So infantry counters cavalry, but is countered by archers. Archers counter infantry, but is countered by cavalry. Cavalry counter archers, but are countered by infantry. Um, Solomar in his city has got a mix of troops. I would assume it's an even mix of all the different troop types. There's also siege units that hopefully Solomar didn't have too many of, because those really are only designed for hitting cities. They counter the watchtower. The watchtower is a structure that uh, fires back on enemies when they attack your city. It gives you a little bit of extra defensive capability, um, because they want you to be able to defend your city in this game. They really do want you to be able to do that, even though we're watching here the strongest player in the game getting totally obliterated. Again, a lot has to go wrong for this to happen. Um, Solimar was in a position where we physically were unable to support him anymore. We, we could not get to him um, because of a number of reasons, but we, we had lost the Lost Kingdom. We all left, uh, and he was the, one of the only ones left behind, certainly without a peace shield which is how this ultimately all happens. Totally nuts. So you might start to wonder at this point, can a player recover from getting completely zeroed? And we're not even going to have all of the footage here from him getting zeroed. Otherwise, this video would just be way too long. We covered the tail end of it in our live stream. Card will be up in the top for that live stream insanity. Total insanity. If you want to go and check that out, uh, I'd recommend it. We also run around on a new account that we created and spend a bunch of money dollar for dollar for every donation we received. We would go spend that money on this new account in a new kingdom. We're having a lot of fun. It's totally fun. Uh, anyways, um, will Solimar continue to play Rise of Kingdoms is a great question. Um, I've actually only talked to Solimar once. Again, we just assume he's like flying around on his private jet uh, or in his yacht and just did like didn't have internet reception. <laughs> when uh, this was all happening. Um, will he continue to play Rise of Kingdoms? Here's what remains behind after almost all of his troops are killed. Um, all of his commanders remain intact. All of his city upgrades and research that he spent a ton of resources on, they're all still, it's all still there. Um, when he trained troops, he did so during an event called the Mighty Governor, which rewards you with legendary commander sculptures that is a part of the reason he's got possibly one of the very best collections of legendary commanders in the game. So 
he's still got a lot of the things that he's invested in. Uh, as soon as he's got more troops, he can be maximum effectiveness on the battlefield. Uh, he'll only have, however, the number of troops remaining in his hospital, which is 690,000. The rest of those troops, he had 35 million at the start of this. He's going to have to train those up from scratch. He is going to have to train those up from scratch, which is pretty wild. Pretty wild. That would take a very long time, free to play. I don't know how many years that would even be. 10 years of training troops, at least, to get to that many troops, I think. I mean, it's just unbelievable. How much would he have to spend to get back to where he was? Well, if it was $200,000 worth of troops, we're pro I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, probably 175 grand. We'll assume 25 grand was what got his um, city completely maxed out, his research completely maxed out. So all that to say... Um, is it possible to recover? It is possible players have recovered from being zeroed. Um, it's called being zero, by the way, because you have zero troops left outside of what's in your hospital. Uh, it's possible to recover from this sort of crazy. My guess is that he will continue to play. My guess is that he will continue to play and that he will rebuild. Uh, I imagine I'll hear from him within the next... 24 to 48 hours, I'll let you know what I hear. I'll let you know what I find out. I honestly, I, oh my gosh, it's so late at night that we're recording this, but um, the look you're seeing in my face is just being completely baffled watching in horror as all of these troops die, as all of these troops die. We've spent, you know, north of $10,000 in this game in a very, very efficient way for spending that kind of money in a, in, in a mobile game. Um, and we've got, you know, ourselves 96 million power, which is pretty high up there in the grand scheme of things. 400 million power is otherworldly. <laughs> it is otherworldly. Uh, and just because I spent 10,000 to get to where I am, like it doesn't scale in that same way. Like you really can go a long way in Rise of Kingdoms free to play. Um, you can go a really, really long way, free to play by playing smart um, and not getting yourselves into the situation that Solimar finds himself in. Um, he could have spent 45,000, 50,000 gems to get a 30-day peace shield if he was going to go inactive. And for a solid 30 days, he could have had peace of mind. That is like a teeny, itty bitty, teeny tiny fraction of the total amount of money that he spent in this game. And uh, yeah. This was 100% preventable. Had about a week to go back to safety. Chose not to. It cost him nothing to, to have done that. Um, tons of Alliance messages. Tons of messages from Discord. There's the 28 million dead troops. And uh, the rest of those troops are going to get killed. We've got all that covered and our live stream cards up in the top for that. If you want to go check that out. If you enjoy this video, like and subscribe means a lot to me. We put out daily videos about Rise of Kingdoms covering all the crazy stuff. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.